Grace, peace, and mercy are yours through our triune God. Amen. My name is Joanne Gallardo, and I am one of the conference ministers for Indiana Michigan Mennonite Conference. Our offices are located in Goshen, Indiana, and I am also located in Goshen, Indiana. In this lesson, the focus is on the necessity of food and water for our survival and for celebration. God's table is available for all who hunger and thirst, and we, as kingdom followers, are responsible for extending the invitation. Reading this lesson reminded me of the beginning of the pandemic. Stores were running out of food, particularly meat and non-perishables, as well as essential items like toilet paper. There was also a run on hand sanitizer and disinfectant. Many of us looked out for our neighbors and our church family, and many of us found ourselves buying groceries. Um, we found stores that carried large supplies of toilet paper and other essentials and shared them with the most vulnerable health-wise and those who couldn't afford the necessary things for a long stay at home. My church picked up and delivered groceries for people in our community who requested help with their daily needs. This lesson also asks us to take not only a look at physical thirsting and hunger and feasting, but also spiritual thirsting, hunger, and feasting. If I were teaching this lesson, I might ask my group about the times they hungered and thirst spiritually. Has anyone in the group experienced a spiritual food desert? For me, a spiritual food desert happens when I am away from my community, my church, and things familiar to me. It can often feel like there is no spiritual nourishment to be found. So the other side of that is, when have people in your group spiritually feasted, and what did that look like? While you're on this discussion, you might explore the questions in the sidebar on page 75. If you could host an extravagant meal and money was no object, what would you serve? Who would you invite? What else would you plan for the evening? I visited Duke Divinity School a few years ago and I was impressed by their cafe on campus. Instead of hiring a restaurant chain or food service, Duke Divinity's campus had a family-owned and operated cafe committed to sustainable practices. They have a deliberate dining policy you can find on their website, and it's focused on sustainability, and they're also committed to reducing waste as much as possible. And in thinking about sustainability, we can then pull our focus to those who don't have the resources they need and those who experience the effects of climate change and of excess waste. There is starvation all over the world, and it's quite possible that your church provides relief funds for organizations that help. And this might be a good time to talk about your church's relief initiatives or active ways those in your community combat hunger, both locally and around the world. In your prayer time, be sure to name places that are experiencing droughts and food shortages. The text for this lesson comes from Isaiah, one of the major prophets. It is often highlighted as the eschatological banquet. And the imagery in this passage is interesting. An interpretation might be that God is swallowing death and wiping tears from everyone's eyes, which is quite a different banquet than most of us are used to. Not only is God preparing a banquet for all, but God is entering what has traditionally been seen as women's work, like preparing a meal, and God is doing the feasting on mourning and death, all the while wiping tears from the guest's eyes. If I were teaching this lesson, I would also be sure to include the part of the lesson that cautions the teacher against pushing the idea of this grand banquet into the future at the end of the age. We know we live in the here and not yet liminal space of God's kingdom. 
what are the ways we can engage in this party, in this banquet right now? How can we not push it off into some unknowable future and live into the abundance we have been given? What is the good news here that we can begin sharing in the here and now? How do we wipe away those tears now and prepare a table for all? In conclusion, this lesson challenges us to look outward. We are ever aware of our own pain, suffering, and loss. And we do indeed look forward to the day where our tears will be wiped away by God. But what does it mean for this message to be for all? Who has been included in this all in the past and who is in this all now? Who are you inviting to the table, to the party? Are you withholding of God's expansive invitation? Are you pushing the banquet into the future or are you celebrating God's party here and now? What is the message being taught by Isaiah in this passage? May the promise and present reality of God's banquet inspire you in your planning this week.